Okay, so we're coming to the end of the semester, uh, which means uh, that we're going to begin discussing topics that have, you know, highly political implications. Now, I'm going to do my best to present you with sort of a value-free analysis of the issues from here on, right? Maintaining my stance that economics is a positive science that has normative implications. So in other words, uh, I'm going to do my best to present to you just the pure economics of the issue uh, this week of unions, right? Which is not say whether uh, unions are good or bad, nor does it tell you that you should or should not support their existence. But what economics can do uh, is sort of help you help to inform your opinions of unions, right? Now, as always, I will never test you on your opinions about labor unions but rather on your ability to analyze them as economists. Okay, so I want to get that out of the way so we can, you know, start at the, on the same page. Now, so far, uh, our analysis of labor markets has omitted uh, any mention of the role of unions or any other form of collective bargaining. Uh, this, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, is a contentious issue and one that we're going to be exploring in a very objective way. Now, some people will view labor unions as a form of, of monopoly, right? So a common uh, view of labor unions is that they are essentially a monopoly, right? That, you know, while beneficial for the members, right, impose substan substantial costs on other non-union members of society. Other people view unions as the major means by which working persons have improved their economic status and as an important force behind much social legislation. Now, regardless of which view you hold, so let's put a question mark there, right? Regardless of which view you hold, we can say a few things here that will help provide you with sort of a framework, right? <clears throat> for organizing your thoughts on these important issues and several others, right? And so the purpose of this week's lecture notes is to analyze the goals, the major activities, and overall effects uh, of unions in the context of economic theory. So I'll begin by providing some brief descriptive material on unions, both domestic and internationally, and then move to a, more to a more fundamental theoretical question. What are sort of the economic forces on the demand side of the market that constrain unions in their desire to improve the welfare of their members? Right? With these in, mi in mind, we'll then move to an analysis of the primary activities of the collective bargaining process and discuss empirical evidence on how unions affect wages, employment, labor productivity, and ultimately, profits. <laughs>